Hello, I'm Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina. And on this episode today, we are going to make a pâté sucré, which is a sweet dough. Uh, We're going to turn into fresh apple almond tarts and some fruit tarts. We did fruit tarts in another episode with a puff pastry, but this is a little bit heavier dough and a little bit sweeter dough, and it's not a super flaky dough like we did in our puff pastry. It's completely different dough. So we're going to make some a couple of really delicious uh, desserts today. So we're going to start with nine and a half ounces of flour, all-purpose flour. We're going to sift this together uh, with a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And this is half a recipe, just so that you know. If you want to make more, it makes a little over a pound of dough. So we're going to sift this together. And when we get it sifted, we're going to go ahead and cream our butter and our powdered sugar together. But it's important to sift to make not only to make sure that you get all of the ingredients mixed well, but to get any clumps. If you see, um, you can see in here that there's clumps of flour. So if you uh, don't have one of these sifters, you can certainly use a hand uh, sifter of some kind. Or I still use my mother's sifter at home in my home kitchen. Of course, in the bakery, we've got huge sifters this big around, and because uh, we're sifting a lot of dry ingredients at once. And as whenever we sift, we don't want it to dump whatever excess is if there's a little bit in the, uh, the, the garbage because every little bit uh, counts. So uh, we want to be sure that we get all of it out. Okay, we're going to go ahead and cream our butter and powdered sugar together. And we've got a half a teaspoon of salt in here. And whenever we're working with powdered sugar, we want to start really slow uh, so that we don't spray it all over. There's just a little bit in here, so it should be okay. And we're just going to cream it together. We don't need to cream it until it's fluffy. We just need to cream it until it's emulsified together and it's a cohesive uh, mass inside the mixer bowl. And then we've got one large egg at room temperature and a half a teaspoon of vanilla that we're going to add to this. And then we're going to add the dry ingredients. So it's, it's done mixing now, so we're going to go ahead and add our, our egg and our vanilla. We're going to let that mix together. And we're going to turn the speed up just a little bit. We're going to stop and scrape down the bowl. Make sure all the butter and egg get mixed up together. Because it takes a minute to do this. So now we've creamed our five ounces of butter on our three and uh, 0.25 or three and a quarter ounces of powdered sugar together until it's uh, emulsified. And let me show you real quick what it looks like or it's supposed to look like. Uh, It looks a little curdled like this, but that's exactly what you want. You haven't done anything wrong. Sometimes I have uh, people call me up and say, I tried to make this and and it didn't turn out right. It looked weird. I said, that's the way it's supposed to look. So. We're gonna go ahead and add in our flour a little bit at a time, just so that we don't spray it everywhere. Now, most of the doughs that we make, we don't wanna put in a mixer. We want them to be flaky, like our regular pie doughs, our puff pastry doughs. Uh, This is a pate sucre, it's a sweet dough. As you know, we put powdered sugar in this. Um, We're going to just go ahead and dump the rest of the flour in. And we have a clean counter so we can add that right back in there. And we're going to mix together until it forms a ball. And this dough is nice because we just pressed it. We're not going to roll this so it's an easy dough to deal with. Uh, Easy dough to make. You don't have to worry about getting it to the necessarily to the right consistency or texture. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of flour down here just so that it doesn't stick to the board. As you can see, it's kind of a sticky dough, and that's exactly what you want because we're gonna press it into these tart form pans. Now, if you don't have any pans like I have out here, uh, you can get them. Williams Sonoma sells them, uh, your crafts. I don't know if the craft stores have them or not. I don't think I've ever seen them in a craft like Hobby Lobby or Michaels, anything like that. But I know you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Williams Sonoma, any of the kitchen, kitchen stores get this out of the way for you so you can see and so just the crumbs we're just going to quickly just gently uh, knead it or press it together to get all those wonderful crumbs we don't want to miss anything this is a wonderful dough 
So we've got this wonderful nice dough now. So now we're going to, um, this is probably going to be a little more than what we need for these tart doughs, but I like um, in the bakery, and even if I put something like this on, on my dessert buffets for one of my home parties, I like to use these long ones because you can cut them in slices this way and you're not having to have a pie, you know, a pie server if you're doing a round. We, they make all different shapes of, uh, of these tart tins and it does have a removable bottom. So you don't have to worry, it's all non-stick. You can just lift the tart shell out and place it on your serving tray and it looks just beautiful. Now these little tart shells, they don't have removable bottoms, but you can get them. We have stacks of them in the bakery that have removable bottoms but they bake fine in these little ones as well and they're not expensive they're they're really really inexpensive so it's a nice investment to make if you want to do something quick and easy like this so we're just gonna i'm gonna take about half of this and i'm gonna lightly flour again i'm just gonna press out to about the size that i want you don't have to use a rolling pin um, you can if you want to but this is a super soft dough so you can just kind of press it uh, the way you want it to go kind of like it, it almost has a texture of play-doh and I know I used to make this when my kids were growing up and I'd give them a hunk of it and they'd make their own little pies repeatedly over and over again with the same dough but it kept them busy and we actually baked what they made and they thought they were having a great time so we're just going to continue to press this into up to the sides of the the pan as well and one of the nice things about this dough is you can you can add to it or you can take it away so it, it really is like like working with with clay or play-doh you can just add and piece together as you need to and we want to go up over the sides because we're just going to run our hands our hands up over it and just trim the sides up so we don't have to worry about that it's going to look beautiful when we're done that's what I do just sometimes do going up the sides I just make a little log and just attach it like this and you don't want to make it super thick I'm probably pressing in maybe about a quarter of an inch thick so if you get really good at doing this you do it often enough you, you kind of know how much extra you're going to have and you don't have to worry about wasting the dough because you can freeze this dough uh, for about a month in the freezer. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna press our hands down the sides and just trim the sides like this. So you don't, there's nothing um, special that you do. You can take your rolling pin and you can run it over, but I just like to just press my hands down over the, the edges of it, because they're not sharp, just to make a nice clean cut. And if I see that like here is a little bit thicker than I want after it's been trimmed, you just press your hand up and go ahead and take the extra off. Now if you have some dried beans at home, we're going to what we call par bake this. We're going to line this with a piece of foil and uh, you can lay some beans in it uh, so that it, it uh, helps maintain the shape of the tart shell because we're going to bake it and then we're going to fill it with our almond uh, frangipan that we've made, put some sliced apples on it that we have already cut and it's going to be a beautiful tart when we're done. So that's what this looks like. So I'm going to get my little tart roller out here and uh, I use this little thing in the bakery and it helps me get my tart dough nice and even. So you just want to dip it in a little bit of flour and spin it. And it's one of those uh, tools that the professionals like to use. I use it for cookies and tarts and different things. And it really helps get a nice smooth finish on the bottom. Again, you can find something like this. Amazon, I think, has everything. <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about not being able to find something if we've got Amazon right now. So anyway, so that's our, um, that's our finished uh, long tart dough. And we're going to um, do the same thing with these little ones. So we'll just take a, a little piece of the dough. I'm just gonna pat it out into a circle. And we're gonna fill these, not with apples, but with some fresh berries, along with our frangipan uh, paste that we've made. And it's the same procedure for these little shells as it was for the longer one. You just press it in and we'll trim the sides. And we want to be sure that it looks fairly even all around. That one's got a little bit of a see-through there. And this is one of those nice, nice doughs that you don't, like I said, you don't have to worry about seeing a seam. Like see if you've tried ever tried to repair a pie dough. Um, if you've uh, 
rolled it out too thin in one end and it's really hard to uh, patch it up even with a little bit of water but this dough just is uh, really nice so you can do that it's a very forgiving dough so that's another little dough and we'll go ahead a little tart we'll go ahead and fill a couple more here again this is something that you can do with your your kids or your grandkids and I remember the last time I had uh, some of my my daughter and my nephew over to my house they're all grown you know they're in their 40s and but we were all in the kitchen together I was of course making fresh pasta and garlic aioli for dipping sauce and desserts they were chopping and prepping and so this is a great thing even for the adult children to have some good family time together I'm all about uh, making memories in the kitchen because the kids sure do remember when they get older so we're just going to do we've got I think enough for maybe one more so you can use any kind of fruit that you want in these uh, tarts now for these small ones we're going to bake the tarts we won't bake the filling for the apple that we uh, are going to fill we are going to bake it again so we're going to par bake it for about 12 minutes so it won't be baked completely through uh, and then we're going to bring it out and we're going to fill it with our frangipan and our apples and then put it back in the oven but with these little fresh fruit tarts we're going to bake it completely so they'll take about uh, 12 minutes to bake uh, totally and then we'll let them cool and we'll we'll finish them out uh, with our fillings and our fresh fruit we're going to put them all together on a uh, cookie sheet so they don't slide around because putting these little tarts in the oven on a rack is hard uh, you can't hardly do that so it does need to go on a cookie sheet so we don't need to brush them with anything we're just going to leave them like that and then we're going to put this other tart shell let me clean this off real quick and for this long tart put it this way here i'm going to add some foil in here to press it down so that it doesn't it doesn't pop up now you can uh, fill this with dried beans like pinto beans or navy beans whatever but you can after you use them for that purpose you cannot cook with them you just put them in a ziploc bag or put them in a mason jar or a plastic container and mark them as pie weights and just you can just use them that way so we're going to put these in a 350 degree oven we're going to start checking them at about eight minutes especially for the large tart because we're not going to bake it fully so we'll see you back in a few minutes So our pâté sucré uh, shells have been baked. As you can see, the smaller shells bake usually quicker than the larger ones. So I let it cool for just a couple of minutes and we're going to go ahead and finish them off. So I'm going to take a little bit of our apricot glaze and I want to brush the bottoms of the uh, tart shells. And this is to seal the shells so that when the fruit bakes in the shells, it doesn't make it soggy. You don't want a soggy crust after going to uh, this work of making these beautiful little shells. So in here I've got two medium apples sliced and uh, sprinkled them with a little bit of sugar or you can sprinkle them with lemon juice so that they don't yellow but I like the sugar because it starts to actually soften them a little bit so you can shape them. Uh, so we've got our apples here, we've got a little bit of almond and some other fruit. And this is our frangipan. It's our sweet almond paste. Um, you can get the recipe uh, online at uh, rokasbakery.com. And uh, we're going to go ahead and spread some of this delicious uh, almond paste down on our tart shells. I'm just going to go ahead and load every one while I'm doing it here. And try and get about the same amount on each shell if you can. You don't have to measure it out. You can oddball it. It's not, uh, it's not an exact science here. but And we're just going to get our offset spatula or you can use the back of a spoon if you don't have an offset spatula. And we're just going to evenly spread this out. Go back and forth and take it down to the end. And I like to grab these little ones like this and just swirl it around. And we're going to be topping this with fruit. You don't have to worry too much about the presentation of what's underneath the fruit because the fruit's going to steal the show anyway. So, let's scrape this off a little bit and so I can add it right back to this tart here. There we go. We'll get that out of the way. And so, what we're going to do 
is we're going to take our sliced apples. They're about a quarter of an inch uh, thick and we're going to just lay them um, horizontally inside the dough like this, inside the almond frangipan. And I don't peel them. Um, I think it looks very rustic and very beautiful, uh, colorful if you want to use golden delicious apples. I think these are galas. Um, I don't like to use a super tart apple for this, only because it just, it's too sour for me. I like something just a little bit sweeter and a little bit softer so that the apples actually uh, have time to soften up a little bit. You don't want to get crunch when you bite into this. You want to um, have a nice soft uh, apple in your mouth. And if you find that your apple is a little bit too wide, you can just you know break the little tip off and slide it right down in there. And we just go ahead and just finish lining and we're just going to, we call this shingling, we're just laying them down against each other like this. And uh, you can shingle meat when you're, like you have a pork loin roast. Uh, you can shingle that when you cut it and serve it on your platter, but it's one of those little, little serving techniques or presentation techniques. And that's what we want on this apple tart. It looks beautiful, unbaked even, doesn't it? Let me wipe my fingers off here. And so far, little tarts, I've got a mixture of blackberries and blueberries. Uh, and we're just gonna place some of these. And these have been coated with some of our apricot jam. And we're just gonna put a few of the berries on here. We're not gonna do a lot of berries uh, on these small ones. So after these berries cook, they'll get pretty juicy. And if you want to um, finish them off, we'll, and I'll do this here in this segment, finish them off with a strawberry fan um, that would absolutely be beautiful. So um, we're gonna put these back in the oven for about seven to eight minutes, I would say. I'm, I'm gonna check them in about five and we'll uh, check them in and see if they're done. So we'll be back in a few minutes. So our tarts are finished baking and I've pulled them out of the oven and they're cooling. So we're going to bring them over and finish them off. So we have our long apple tart. And then we have our four smaller ones. I'll just put out here and get the tray out of the way. So the apple tart, what we're going to do is we're going to take the rest of our apricot jam that we have left over and the apples are still warm so we're just going to lightly brush brush the apples and it gives it a nice glossy finish and if you don't remember how to make the uh, apricot glaze it's very simple uh, you take apricot jam and uh, you heat it up and then take a sieve probably bigger than this this is for dusting um, a strainer, you might call it that, in your kitchen, and uh, just strain that uh, jam through this, push it through the sifter so that it takes the chunks out because you don't really want chunks, you just want the nice, uh, the nice liquid part of the jam. And so that's the finish of the, uh, the large tart. And so that since this has a removable bottom, we can just take it right out of the form make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. This is one of the things that's really nice about these kind of tart forms. It makes it really easy to pop out. You don't have to worry about anything sticking. And so you can put it on a board, you can put it on your favorite crystal dish or even a porcelain dish. Uh, you can garnish it however you like. Uh, we're gonna garnish it with some slivered almonds because below uh, the bottom of it is the almond frangipan. So we're gonna dust it with some powdered sugar after this. But doesn't that just make a beautiful presentation? And I only like to do a light dusting on this because you don't want to um, overpower this beautiful apple. And I didn't put any sugars or anything on the apple. We want the apple to have a true apple taste because it is an apple almond tart. So we don't want to cover up the, the beautiful flavor of the apples. That's our long tart and these little tarts here they just pop right out. They don't have removable bottoms and they're really easy to work with because they're non-stick. So we're just going to pop these out. And the fruit has stuck to the uh, inside the frangipan, so 
get this out of the way here so we don't. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to make some strawberry fans to put on top of this. And if you want to, you can put a dollop of whipped cream if you want to do something like that. But we're just going to top it with a strawberry fan. Let me see if I have enough uh, almond glaze to lightly brush these berries here. I think I do. But I think uh, with a little bit of slivered almonds on top, it makes a nice, beautiful dessert. And it's not a sweet dessert. Um, you know, the Italians and the French, they don't really make really super sweet desserts like we're used to in America, uh, which is one of the reasons why I love making their pastries. Um, of course, I'm Italian, Sicilian, and um, we love cookies. <laughs> we don't do cakes that often, but we love our cookies. And, um, and they're not super sweet cookies either. So we're just gonna put a few slivered almonds across here. And again, we're gonna dust these as well with a little bit of um, powdered sugar. Or like I said, if you want to, you can do it a little different and put a little dab of uh, whipped cream on top. But these are our beautiful apple almond tart and our almond fruit tarts with blueberries, blackberries, and, uh, and strawberry fans. This is Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina. Thanking you for watching this episode and visit us at www.rocasbakery.com. Our online store is, uh, just click on the online tab, we ship nationwide. And if you're in North Carolina, visit our Rosie, our bakery coffee truck at the Piedmont Triad Farmer's Market on Saturdays and Sundays from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Look for the red and white striped truck. See you next time.